Hey there, Lambrat Sketch here. Sometimes I wonder if the sole purpose of being drunk is to make me cringe afterwards. You know that feeling when you're really sleepy? You go to bed and you're just about to fall asleep when your brain suddenly goes, Hey, remember when your friend took you to his house because you were passing out on the street and you told his mom you've seen better cooking in a rolling meth lab? <sighs> Why are you doing this to me? And you thought it would be cute to tell her she kinda looks like that porn star you really like? Please, stop. And if you should all maybe have a threesome, that's it, I'm gonna do it. My point is, we've all said some very, very stupid things while drunk. Stupid, but honest. After all, in wine is the truth. But why is this? Why does alcohol make you blab things? And are there any other, more potent substances that can be used as an actual truth serum? If you watch spy movies, you might have heard of a substance called sodium pentotol, a trademark for sodium theopentol. However, this drug is not fiction. Organizations such as the CIA have been using it for quite a long time now. Back when this drug was discovered, it found its use as a general anesthetic, and it was quite a good one in that. When injected intravenously, it only took about a minute to induce anesthesia. But while using it, doctors experienced something... weird. In that small time gap between the drug's injection and complete anesthesia, patients often... blab things. And not any things, private things. Things that seemed like they wanted to get off their chest for a while now, but just weren't able to. Psychiatrists soon started experimenting with this, and lo and behold, a truth serum was born. There was something about this drug that made people completely lose their inhibitions. They also found that it was quite useful for interrogation, because formulating lies was near impossible at the correct dose. Now the question is, how does it do that? Pentotol belongs to a class of drugs called barbiturates, most famous for their use as sleeping pills. Barbiturates work by increasing the effect of our brain's main inhibitory neurotransmitter called GABA, which calms nerve cells. In addition, it also blocks some receptors of the main excitatory neurotransmitter glutamate. These effects combined cause your brain to become inhibited, which means your brain functions get slowed down, and the opposite of what stimulants like Adderall do. That's why we call barbiturates and alcohol depressants, because they slow your brain down, not because they make you depressed. Now with this brain inhibition comes a wide range of depressant effects. These include sedation, sleep, anxiety relief, lowered blood pressure, and of course, cognitive impairment and loss of one's inhibitions. Yes, brain inhibition makes you lose your inhibitions. Different barbiturates have different flavors of these effects, probably due to where in the brain they act the most. So for instance, phenobarbital is used as an anxiolytic and anticonvulsant since its sedative effects only manifest themselves in high doses. Similarly, pentotol's sedative effects also manifest themselves in higher doses, while in lower doses its most notable effects are loss of inhibition and cognitive impairment, i.e. boldness and stupidity. This leaves the subject in a sort of hypnosis, a state where they are neither awake nor asleep. So the loss of inhibition, a much stronger one than that of alcohol, results in a compulsion to say things that are bothering the subject. But what if you don't want to hear something that's bothering them? What if you want to extract information that isn't important to them, but they are just told to keep a secret, like what's the password to a computer? Well, this is where the cognitive impairment sets in. You will ask them for the info you want, and they will be unable to lie to you. It isn't quite understood why this is, but it's probably due to lying being a much more complex brain function than simply saying facts. And with their brain being slow to retardation, formulating lies is near impossible. So chances are, they'll just answer your question. It's quite funny actually, sometimes the patients would try to lie but would fail miserably, like when your child blames the cat for all the hardcore porn you found on his computer. Another thing which is good for interrogation is that subjects rarely remember the things they've said while on the drug, so sometimes the CIA interrogated their own agents. This also can be pretty funny, like when a friend is bragging how he had wild sex with his girlfriend last night even though you know he hated it because he's secretly gay. Now with all of this said, actually extracting information using pentotol can be frustrating as hell. First there's the problem of getting the correct dose, which is different for everyone, so injecting 300 milligrams will make one person spit in your face for tying him to a chair, while another person would already be in a coma or dead, even when you get the desired which is an amazing feat. What isn't amazing is anal seepage. Ahem, <clears throat> excuse me. What isn't amazing is sitting five hours in a room with a person too high to cooperate. So you'll just be sitting there asking, what is the password? And hearing for the 50th time about how one warm summer night in the cornfields, Lucy lost her virginity to a piece of farming equipment. Also, there's the problem of subjects falsely confessing due to being pressured while high, which is why confessions extracted using pentotol aren't accepted in court. But honestly, I don't see how confessions extracted by waterboarding or other CIA interrogation methods are any better. If nothing else, it will be certainly fun to inject one of your friends with it. So what do you think? Is pentotol a valid? Truth Serum, leave a comment and also subscribe and join the Lab Rats.